So we've had a lot of people that have been on Shark Tank on the show. Okay. We've never had a, a shark. And so I'm when, the first of many. You're the first of many. Yes. When it comes to being on Shark Tank from a shark's perspective, statistically, all the sharks will slash their valuations in half. That is like tried and true. Mm-hmm. Did you know any of that going in? Is it something you guys... Uh, oh, you mean... Like... Is it a strategy that it a all strategy? sharks kind of talk about or at least discuss ahead of time? I come in, I go, hey, I got the better for you pillow, and I've made $200,000 last month, and my valuation's $10 million. And then Mark will go, great, I'll, I'll give you 10% for at a $5 million valuation for X amount of dollars. And you're like, okay. It's like every time. Every time it's a yeah, slash. Yeah. No, it's... It is funny. There's no communication or commiseration whatsoever about the deal structure, to be honest. It's like, it's like all acting intuitively. Okay. What I sort of found funny watching the show, which you guys can, can relate because you invest too, right? You know, CPGs have their multiples out in the world, right? For those <laughs> sure. listening, consumer product goods, sure. you know, they were five to seven. Now they're zero to negative, you know, because we're in a shit show. But like, <laughs> Save me. Yeah, Save right, me. Right, exactly. the valuation. <laughs> whatever, right, whatever it takes, just pay the mortgage, please. Yeah. But anyway, back in normal times. <laughs> uh, and yet you go on the show and it, none of that logic applies. It used to drive me nuts. I'd be looking at Kevin O'Leary applying like math that doesn't quite exist, but it also is kind of common sense too, in a weird way. So I think it's a reality is I think it's a function of these are not investors using other people's money who are getting paid based on carry. If you look at all the funds, they're just getting money based on how much money they're putting out to work. And the returns are important, but it's not your own money. And when you're investing your own money, you're, it's like a return to reason. Like, no, wait a second. I don't care about multiples. I'm not looking to flip this. What can I generate? I think that's what drives the, the – which is kind of interesting. It's a bunch of people using their own checkbook, yeah. like trying to ensure that they get a return. And there's a so, value that they can yeah, – they're right, trying so, to buy value and create value. Right. So there's something – people are like, Shark Tank is not realistic. I was like, is it not realistic or is the world not realistic? And this is primitive behavior when somebody's money's on the line. That's what I find fascinating. When you get on that set – Oh, that's such an interesting take. Yeah, right. Right, because I was contemptuous of it until it was, Interesting. Like, until it was my money. But then, I, <laughs> but then I was realized, but I'm kind of, my behavior was distorted because I was looking at this more as, you know, this is cool. It's also a branding play. I'm not going to be permanent. Also, I felt bad for everybody. Like, it's just like, I just feel so, you know what I mean? So and I you be Kevin. Yeah, I can't be, but that this is their money that they're doing all the time. And like everyone is very sympathetic to the you know entrepreneurs, but what you don't see often is the is the parts that were not totally accurate in what was presented on the set. Right. You know what I mean? Like the, it's a two way street. Yeah. Like you know if you found your way onto that set, you got a lot go, a lot of grit, a lot going for you. Yeah, you're hustling. You know so. Well, you talk about the equity play in the book, how it's always up for grabs in terms of it doesn't like if you, if the shark is going to invest their money, it's also their time. And so they want to make their, their time worthwhile. Like if they only get 2% of the company. That's not worth it for them, no matter how much the company valuation is. So I feel like that kind of affects the slashing of uh, the, in half of, of these prices and, and it does. Because you're right. I'm glad you brought that up. This is an important part of the book, just trying to educate everybody, saying it's not just money, it's time. And we've all learned this the hard way, right? You get so excited and enamored by something and you know you think it's going to be a score and then you realize like yeah. that took forever and I only own 3% of it. So I think the sharks intuitively under there are solving for a percentage ownership stake mm-hmm. and that's what's driving it, right? I'm, I'm only going to put 300 grand to work and that's going to have to equal 20%. That's the part that's unrealistic about the show that doesn't quite work in VC land because that would mean your first valuation, you gave away 30% of the company, right? Yeah. right? Like that, that, that's the inherent tension. The fun part though is that these are not VC type businesses. They are real businesses that are meant to eventually cash flow that make you money, that pay you rather, uh, and that not, not necessarily to flip. So, but back to the show. The show itself is so similar to what you see on TV. The only, I'd say, not even distortions is that a pitch could take 40 minutes and the end version on that you see is seven and a half. When I have been on it and I watched the version on the TV, I can't remember what was edited out. That's oh, how, wow. that's that's how a, accurate. Wow. There's some amplification of conflict. Like one time, Mark Cuban, we were competing for a deal. This is great. He was belittling me to the investor. This actually happens. And he was like, he's like, yeah, and he goes, yeah, Matt. Because I was saying, well, I have this big soccer business. I can help you. And I have a big platform. He's like, yeah, Matt, you and your 15,000 Instagram followers. And I was like, <laughs> oh. And I'm like, and I go, Mark Cuban, like a billionaire, acting like a teenage kid. Love, like kind of, yeah. kind of flexing about your, about your number of followers. They didn't show my retort. I was like, "What didn't you show the answer?" What did you say? I said, "I said, oh, look at Mark Cuban acting like a little teenager, flexing oh, yeah. his number of, you know, followers." 
but they didn't show that part. <laughs> so there's a, a degree of decorum that yeah. is maybe, yes. that is that is kept out of the. And I'm uh, sure you're part. friendly. Maybe oh, on for some good. boards together. Yeah. They were all great. I mean, I, I've been very open about being anxious coming on the show. Yeah. You know, it's in the book, which it's, is great. It's weird. It's great. To be, let me, now we're being, we're keeping it really real. I don't know why more people have been guests, haven't talked publicly about what I'm talking about. Could I be the only one that had imposter syndrome going on that show? It's not possible. So then I'm like, it's an opportunity to make a gift of yourself by sharing that publicly. Yeah. And what, what made me actually begin talking about it I had a conversation with my wife about it, because if you look at me on TV on that first episode, objectively, one could argue uh, you're a natural at it or you're good at it or it seemed effortless. I'm pretty good at making things that are gut wrenching seem effortless. So that's one view of it. Or I could say what was really going through my head and now use that as a teaching moment. And I actually think not communicating how I was really feeling is a form of not violence, but, uh, but, uh, but a form of regression. Yeah. Because now I'm, uh, I'm pushing this forward into the world. Look how good I was on TV. I'm making great Instagram posts where I'm telling you about how I went from government cheese to now I've re- I'm redeemed. And by the way, why haven't you figured your shit out? Because you, if you came from crap too, you should have it figured out. That is like, it's so subtle. It's a form of like abuse. It's a form of abuse yeah. to the people who need the most for you to tell the actual truth. Because if you leave it there, this is what I hate about Instagram and you know, self-styled gurus these days. They have this narrative, this arc of redemption redemption totally. where they sometimes probably amplifying or manufacturing stumble, you know, yeah. or crisis. I was vulnerable. I, you know, my ego got the best of me. I blew all my money on Lamborghinis, but now I'm, 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 I'm good. And, and now, now you I hate when that happens. Yeah. No, right. Me too. <laughs> we so, can all relate. So <laughs> fucked up. Right. But then you like, now you're, you volunteer at, a, you know, whatever a monastery, blah, blah, blah. But when I, when I, I think the tough part is when you present or purport to have the answers to the test, but you don't asterisk it or disclaim how you still struggle implementing it, you actually are amplifying a wound. Because the typical person, even when they occasionally stumble upon the answers to the test, they forget them, right? That's the human experience. So the book, I know this is maybe too like Jedi, but like the book is in my attempt to be like, I have the book and I wrote the book, but I wrote the book so I'd read the book alongside you. Yeah. Not because I no longer need to read the book. It's like your own little reminder. Yeah, because that's why like the stuff is so like circular in the book. It's like, yeah, you got your TV show. Oh, you're pressing it to the mayor of New York. Mom dies that day. That day is a metaphor for the human experience. That's the true story, right? Some of the last things my mother ever said to me is that no one will care when I'm dead. and my, My life will not matter. And it is true. No one cared. She had a couple of friends who did, but she disappeared from the face of this earth and she was never redeemed, right? And I have never, fi- now I have never fully healed from that either, like, because we all don't fully heal from this stuff, right? And so, like, I do, maybe this is my, when I see these self styled gurus and they're purporting to have it all figured out, I'm like, are you hurting people right now, actually? You're not helping them because you're not telling them the truth that you don't have shit figured out. If you made it this far, I bet you loved the episode. So you should join our YouTube channel membership for only $2.99 a month. This gets you access to one, the whole unabridged conversation. Two, you get the episodes on Monday, one day earlier. Three, you get two additional entries to our giveaways. Check out our Instagram to see what we've given away. And four, you get access to seasons one through three. That's over 100 episodes of wisdom and life-changing advice. What are you waiting for? Join.